With responsibility for ensuring command and control capabilities, the Brigade Communications Officer, referred to as the S-6, plays a key role in providing the Brigade with situational awareness. Major Stephen Dale told us about the key communication systems that are being evaluated at the fall 2014 NIE. Yes, sir. Well, as it says the communications officer, I'm responsible for ensuring that the brigade can do its communications. That's command and control, uh, and that's a key piece of that communications out there. So everything from the Win-T, uh, Increment 2, which is the SUT we have here at NIE 15.1, all the way down to a radio that a soldier holds to communicate back to his squad leader, ultimately responsible to make sure that's working across the battlefield. So when the commanders are in their vehicles, it's critical that they have that information that could be changed in the battlefield, whether it's uh, information, uh, ISR, so you're getting in, in, intel information that comes through, whether it's a new map, whether it's orders, just information they can help to do their battle. Traditionally, they don't have that. They get a voice. They get it over a radio. Uh, they, have, they don't have a picture. So with this on-the-move capability, we can push that video down to them. We can push a map down to them. We can send information back and forth in a chat. So if they're sending information that's voice, sometimes you can forget about that. It's not clear with the chat. Clearly, you can go back and read it again. It really helps them to keep that situational awareness and they don't have to wait to go back to the rear or back to their talk to find out what they may have missed when they're out there in the battlefield. It gets them right there. Additionally, when they're on the battlefield and they're finding information out, it can be pushed back up to higher for intelligence gathering to help other missions out. So it's a critical piece of how they continue to fight and get that information out quickly to them. So in the vehicles themselves, there it's, traditionally it's a, it's a number of moving pieces, if you will, and computers up there. We obviously don't want the uh, soldiers that are in there to have to be turning on, learning a lot of different steps in the process, and it's important they don't take a lot of time to both turn it on and turn it back down. So what WinT has done is they've not only turned that into basically a one-switch process, so the soldier goes in and then it automates all the turn on of the rest of the equipment, but it also resets it each time. So even if there is a problem with one of the, the sneeze, which is the company commander type vehicles or the POPs, which are your battalion command vehicles, even if, let's say, there's power goes out and it crashes or there's a problem, which can happen with computers, every time it comes back up, it resets itself to a default state, so there's no issue. So if they have to remove themselves from the vehicle quickly and don't go through the full shutdown procedure, in the past, that could have caused a problem starting it up. No longer, again, it resets to that default state and they can move out very quickly. In a normal brigade, you have between 10 to 15 nodes that we would manage at NetOps, at the battalion and at the brigade level. With Winty Increment 2, that network capability goes all the way down to the company level. We have anywhere between 50 to 60 different nodes we're managing. In effect, it's, it's as much or sometimes more than you'd see at a division level in a traditional division. So it's critical that we are able to manage that. Now, we don't have the manpower you'd have at a division, so we have to make sure it's as, as simple as possible, but yet we can still operate it in the back room there. So the new NetOps suite, what it does, it allows us to get to the critical pieces quickly, focus on those, but we can still drill down into those vehicles if there's a problem. This is an example. If we see a vehicle that comes up in a battlefield is red, traditionally that means it's off the line or bad, we can do two things. We can see geographically where it is, so we can tell if it's back on the FOB or someplace, so maybe it's just down for maintenance, so not a critical concern for us right now. Or we can tell if it's out maneuver, so it's something we need to focus attention on. But that allows us to save time. We're not chasing down vehicles that may not really be a problem. Additionally, we can go all the way down to inside of those vehicles to see if a piece of commsec, if the uninterruptible power, power supply is down, all those little pieces. I don't have to look at them, but if there's a problem, it can help me troubleshoot. So I'm not starting from scratch. I can dig down and see, okay, I know what part it is that's broken, so I can quickly get to the root of the problem. That helps us manage it more quickly with less man hours and less time. So up until Winti Increment 2, our communications were satellite-based uh, with Winti Increment 1 and 1B. Of course, satellite's great. It gives you beyond line of sight capability so we can communicate wherever we want, but there are some challenges with it. It costs a lot of money to get on the satellite. It's not very fast all the time. There's high latency. So what we really prefer is line of sight communications. It doesn't cost the government and us any money to use them. They're much faster for us. The challenge with that has always been trying to get them lined up. So with, whether it's wind tinkering one or in the past, you had to make sure you precisely aligned the antennas. That could take some significant time. Even if wind came along or blew, it could cut, knock those out of whack. With the HNR antennas that you'll see on the TCNs and the POPs, they're omnidirectional. So as you drive down a road or as you, as you establish them here, they'll automatically pick up any other antennas that are within range. Greatly simplifies the process for it. Again, reducing manpower, greatly speeds up the time that we can get up on the network and allows us to get that high-speed network up and running.